the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Good morning, everyone. This while still standing, I truly i count it an honor to bring the word of god here at this second service i'm here for three things one to identify with pastor uche to let you know that i love you and um, i truly appreciate you and your dear wife second to stand in faith with all who love this man to just speak a blessing upon his life upon that which God has done, is doing, and will yet do. And thirdly, to join the body of Christ to supply foil for the next level. If you're in agreement with me in one minute, please lift your voice and ask the Lord to speak to us and to bless his servant. Please go ahead. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I sat back very quietly when I came in and I followed the service, followed all the videos, the recordings, and two things stood out. Number one is that Jesus made a statement that he who would desire to be great would first be a servant. And this in truth, I have seen, we have all seen in the life of this great man. He truly is a servant leader. I've not known him for very long, but I can testify that he's a man who is truly loyal, very dedicated, very passionate, and very sincere. In a world like this, sincerity is worth your applause. Very sincere man. Pastor Uche, thank you. I have really not come to preach as it were because it's your day. And um, we live in a world where we trivialize the achievements, the sacrifices, the pain. When you celebrate years, you don't celebrate the passage of time. You celebrate endurance. You celebrate consistency. You celebrate resilience, unbendedness, continuity. And we're here this morning, not just to count time, not just to count years. And we're standing here only because you made you made away when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over you made away and we're standing here only because you made Father, speak to our hearts, and I pray in the name of Jesus that everyone will be blessed. But more importantly for today, bless our dear pastor, a father to many, a mentor to many, a brother and a friend to many, a son to many. Bless him all the same in the name of Jesus. While standing, thank you for your patience. I want to dedicate, I'm told to do this. Take Off the Limits is the first book written by 
Pastor Uche Aigbe. Hallelujah. And um, very beautiful book, excellently bound. And I'm told to dedicate this such an honor to be doing this, Pastor Uche. Uh, by the way, I may not have the time to do that for everyone, but let me truly honor Reverend Barnabas Arasos. Thank you. Thank you. Truly honor you. I honor all my friends and brothers. Thank you. I love you with all my heart. Honor to every man and every woman of God here represented. Praise the name of the Lord. And I'm told, I hope I'm right on this, that um, he intends that these books, the available copies, be given free. Is that true? I had to verify because it sounds too good to be true. Well, I agree, but I think I disagree. Praise the name of the Lord. If I were you, I would not, I think I would feel really guilty to just pick a copy like this at such a time as today and walk away. No, it's not the spirit of gratitude. It's not the spirit of a worthy recipient of such grace and I'm not here to raise funds but this is my encouragement I I'm going to do it myself but I want to encourage everyone please even though it is intention that these books be given free I don't know how many copies and I don't know how far they would go but here's what I want to challenge you to do more than just blessing the man for this day I want you to sow into this project do it with revelation, do it with understanding, be intentional, be lavish. Are we in agreement on that? Stretch your hands to this book and let's speak. He said, write, for these words are faithful and true. Everything written is because it intends to be preserved as a testament that they are faithful and true, taking off the limits. Stretch your hands and pray. Written by your pastor, your father in this house, Lord, we thank you. Are you speaking? Let these books go far and wide. Go to homes, offices, lives, situations, and bring liberty. Release men from the shackles that mediocrity, limitations, and status quo has created in their lives. This is a book that challenges people to aspire, to rise to their highest spiritual potential. Are you still praying? Father, we release life upon this material. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare. They remain blessings wherever they are found. Electronically and as a book, the hard copy. We declare in the name of Jesus that this will bring salvation. It would bring healing. It would bring deliverances. It would bring transformation to minds. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we bless the author. This is his first. It will not be his last. In the name of Jesus. By this prayer, we prime your inspiration for greater books. That you will reach deep into the wells of your spirit. And they will come gushing like rivers of living water. In the name of Jesus. You will bring forth books and more books and materials that will bless the body of Christ. In the name that is above all names. And by the privilege of God's grace, we declare this book dedicated to serve the purposes of God, to be a contribution to the growth, the blessing, the edification of the entire house on the rock, and by extension, the body of Christ. We do this in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Please celebrate Jesus. Thank you. Congratulations. Again, I congratulate you for your 50th birthday. The Lord honor you. The Lord take you from glory to glory in Jesus' name. You may be seated. Thank you for your patience. First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians 5. For reference this morning, just a brief charge and we pray. First Thessalonians 5. from verse 12 1st Thessalonians 5 and verse 12 and we beseech you brethren 
to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you 13 and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves here is Paul admonishing the church in Thessalonica and as part of his discourse he brought the issue of according honor to those who were the leaders set over the work within those regions and he said please give it to us again first Thessalonians 5 verse 12 he says first Thessalonians 5 verse 12 let's have it please I beseech you brethren he says know them that labor among you and are over you and admonish you discern them discern them the word know them means to discern verify if it is true that they are living up to this responsibility to labor among you to admonish you and if you find that this is true 13 now gives you your own responsibility your first responsibility is to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake i studied a bit on the word esteem to esteem means to regard with respect to esteem means to show admiration please pay attention the bible says to esteem them not just to recognize them not just to be aware that they are there provided there are people who labor in word and doctrine provided they admonish you provided they are responsible for your growth spiritually the bible leaves a responsibility to the recipients of such grace to regard them with respect to regard them with admiration jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 it says i will give you pastors after my heart jeremiah 3 and verse 15 that the pastors will feed you with knowledge and with understanding the primary assignment of feeding is for growth and for nourishment and that the ingredients that make for the growth and the nourishment of the believer is knowledge and understanding and the chef that goes out of his way to make this meal available knowledge knowledge of the truth knowledge of the principles of the kingdom and understanding he says i will give you that means they are gifts a pastor is not an employee a pastor is not the staff of a ministry administratively he may be a staff administratively he may be one who was brought in but let me tell you all genuine pastors all genuine spiritual leaders if they feed you with knowledge and with understanding then they are beyond employees they are gifts sent from God sent by God I will give you pastors after my heart and the Bible says they will feed you Simon Bajona he said lovest thou me more than this yes prove that you love me by feeding my sheep and feeding my lamb to esteem starts by discernment you cannot show honor or respect or admiration to a man until you take a moment of deep discernment and contemplation there are a number of things you have to think about that will ultimately lead to your showing honor are we together now there was a great servant of god who said if you can be thoughtful then you can be thankful thankfulness and gratitude and honor come from the well of deep contemplation look at my life how was i when this man was introduced to my life 
and now what has become of me by reason of the truth you know we live in a world sadly and respectfully speaking we downplay men and women of god and it's becoming fashionable to talk against servants of god is becoming fashionable to downplay on the value that spiritual leaders provide and the role that they have to play in nation building in shaping um the morality and and the advancement of society so every time we talk about men of god we just act like there are some people at the corner just helping to drive people as far as fanatism is concerned you take away ministers of the gospel for one year from any nation and you see the level and the extent of moral decadence confusion and so on and so forth that will exist there you know the value of a thing by the consequences of its absence you do not know the value of a thing just by its presence you want to know how valuable a person or a thing is create a system that takes that person or that thing out of your life or out of that system the consequences that follow will tell you how valuable a person or a thing is I will give you pastors after my heart let me submit to you house on the rock the refuge it is a it takes a level of love and passion and fire for God to be and remain in ministry please understand my communication to be and remain in ministry it was easy for Jesus to call the disciples who would later become his apostles. After all, they heard about a celebrity who just came to town, healing the sick, doing mighty things. Who would not follow such a man? Come! No wonder they did not ask questions. They left because they were following results. And then as they sojourned with Jesus, they began to be offended. They began to be angry. And a time came... Jesus said, will you also go? Because some left. Jesus said, would you also go? Because some were offended. Even the disciples among themselves, they began to have all kinds of conflicts. And he said, to whom shall we go? Thou alone has the words of life. And he got to a point where even the disciples themselves were offended and they said, look, we are not going, but we need to talk. We have left all. If you have forgotten, let's remind you that we have left all to follow you what is our take here and he says now i know verily verily no one who leaves father mother etc for me and for the gospels he says but you will receive in this life this and that and that just when they were about to smile he said with persecution why add that kind of statement you are supposed to be comforting me and now you say i'm going to receive all of this with persecution the average man of God in this nation goes through more challenges than most people will ever know. Because you are not just contending against men and ideas. You are contending against principalities, powers. You are at the epicenter of every demonic attack because the law is strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. So in order of priority, in order of priority, the devil will zoom his attention and want to discredit you, fight you, afflict you. Everything that can bring you down will be used against you. This is the price that these bearers of the cross carry every day. Yet in the midst of it, they pray for you. Yet in the midst of it, they smile. I once saw, I think I was looking for a video on um, YouTube. And I saw a, an image that, that blessed me so much. It was the image of a young boy with an arrow shot at him. And then that young boy now had become an elder with several arrows at his back. I said, wow. His growth did not stop the arrows. He only built capacity to receive them. So one arrow brought him down as a boy. And now as an old man, his back was full of arrows. 
it says let no man trouble me i bear in my body the mark my question is who caused that mark a scar is proof that there was once a wound a scar is a testament that there was once a wound that is now healed hallelujah the burden of ministry the burden of being misunderstood the pressure to be right the pressure to be consistent now you are you are dealing with people who come from all races if you are a doctor you only deal with patients if people are not sick they don't have any business coming to the hospital is that true if you're a legal practitioner you deal with people who have legal issues if you're a military man you deal with security issues if you are a businessman you deal with the area that concerns you but as a man of God you deal with everyone all of these people I mentioned there is a place of convergence the church is that place so they come together with different problems different viewpoints that have been cultured by their professional lives and now you are supposed to use one mic one voice one mind to speak to all those people and appeal to them with respect to their ideas it takes a lot to be a man of God it takes more than holding a mic to be a man of God it takes more than carrying a Bible to be a man of God it takes more than oratory it takes more than just praying and studying the Bible it takes stamina this pulpit you see is not as flat as it looks it's a slippery ground there is a skill to stand in here if you don't stand with dexterity and skill you can fall so when you see a man holding this for a long time he deserves double honor because he has mastered the skill the ability to speak at the times of pain and at the times of joy pastor Aibe, i believe has wept at many funerals pastor Aibe has been i believe has stood by many families calling them in the night i know what it means listen you see when we talk like this and you see pastor standing up crying they understand it is painful I respect I, I respond to an average of six to seven hundred text messages every day every day without fail including today and sometimes after a meeting I never off my phone did you know my phone has been on silent since 2012 this is a strategy for my health this is a, this is part of choosing life doesn't matter what phone I buy the law remains the same because when God anoints you and sends you, you are there for people. You know, a time came in my life when a man of God had to call me and say, Apostle, be careful, an elderly man. He said, Africans kill their prophets. You must be careful. And God gave me the revelation that saved me by making me look at the cross. And I found out for the first time that I was not the one on that crucifix. I'm only representing the one. Now, that does not mean we will not be committed. I'm, I'm, I'm. Praise the Lord. A civil servant has work hours, respectfully speaking, seven or eight to five, and any other thing. In most most places they would have to take responsibility for extra hours but a man who is called into ministry works every time all the time any time under any condition you are the first to receive the heat of every bad news and usually the last to receive the good news are we together now yes sir you can't be sleeping and one emergency stand up someone something is about to happen and whilst you are tired you remember the cross you remember your vow you remember your commitment and in the midst of the pain you stand up it takes stamina to remain behind this pulpit the average man of god resigns after one year and says i'm not doing again i will serve in the house of god but not to stand behind the pulpit preaching the word do you know that the average pastor prepares at least two to three sermons every week and we're talking of different topics i'm opening you up to the implications of being a spiritual leader not even one who is heading a great church like this it takes skill 
to prepare sermons sermons that are life applicable sermons that are true current with your research well articulated you have to pray over it and then there are other aspects i hope you know that even as a man of god your family still demands their time even as a man of god your loved ones still demand their time and standing on the pulpit will be no excuse to fail in these areas it takes stamina to be in ministry and to remain in ministry why am i saying all of this so that it can give us a picture in fact here's how the bible puts it one time they killed the cousin of jesus john and he went up the mountain to mourn the death of his cousin as soon as a crowd saw him climbing the mountain they did not care whether he was heartbroken whether he was wrecked in his spirit hey here is a miracle worker carry the sick you see the thing about being a man of god is that people do not believe you are human they try to understand but they quickly they easily forget when they see you eat they say you are eating hello sir 2 a.m oh how are you it looks like you're sleeping i'm surprised these are the kinds of godlike expectations that they have over ministers and it is true that we are anointed but very quickly let me encourage you that every man of god is a man he's only a man of god we get angry we get frustrated there are things we have to stand and believe god for we also have to follow the same path of spiritual growth that we advocate for others it is not automatic with us you pray we pray you fast we fast there's no extra answer to prayer that no 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 there is an election of grace there are graces that follow the office but everything you do as hard as it is for you that is what we do too plus the one we do for you it takes a lot to truly be a man of god because on one hand you are laboring to grow spiritually but whilst that is happening you have to think of your people i can tell you that whilst pastor is sitting here in as much as he's trying to enjoy his day something is in his mind thinking next week i'm up stage again i'm preaching have i finished that sermon and it's just about the people let me tell you this whoever thinks less of himself and turns his attention his energy to your growth without demanding payment deserves honor a thousandfold we live in a selfish world a self-centered world what is the need for me being a man of god is a sacrifice being a man of god in fact this is my definition of love the absence of self the degree to which self is absent that is the degree to which love is present more than emotions the absence of self did you know i tell you the truth and i lie not while i was in zaria Would you believe that sometimes I would not stay home for up to two weeks in one year? This was the price. Sometimes 4 a.m., 5 a.m., I'm on my way to the airport. And then sometimes the flight will be shifted and you sit down there. My bedroom became the aircraft. I'll put my head down and then only wake up when the plane lands. This is an example of what men of God go through to see that the word of God comes in season. What of times when they have to shelve their own pain? You just hear that someone you love so much died and yet you have to bury that pain and focus on bringing the message, the word in season because your pain is still no excuse to starve God's people of the word and you can cry later on. What of times when you have to stand on stage bleeding but you will have to smile because your message requires that you inspire the people through your smile it's not being fake it's the sacrifice 
what of times when people stand for hours they pay the price with their health they pay the price with their families i believe that if we ask the woman of god pastor chi tell us give us an honest assessment of the price you've had to pay she will first laugh then cry then speak they asked billy graham we're about to pray they asked him they said you went around the world even preached in north korea must have been a great sacrifice he said yes but he said ask my wife and they asked the wife they said did you ever think of divorcing your husband she said yes and people were surprised billy graham's wife said yes i i didn't divorce him but many times i thought of quitting and ending that marriage because it was as though i was a visitor i would watch television and see people clapping and say this is my husband i want him too the same way you people want him i want to. he paid my bride price i want him and now you people cannot let me have my husband but that's the price are we together this morning i'm opening your eyes to see the price that men of god including this great man here pay daily most men of god when they want to really talk about issues they talk in the night just like politicians am i right on that that's the time you are sure you may have some time to discuss serious issues and in the midst of your pain your tiredness you have to resort to talking in the night both to men and to god you talk in the night i made up my mind that everywhere i see a man of god a servant of god who loves jesus and serves him with all his heart i will show them my respect i will show them my honor now see how painful it is when a man of god goes through all of this and mounts the pulpit and here's what we say i thought it would be ah this message is like he preached this one before I'm expecting something more and God is watching you on the throne the God you prayed you cried to is watching you and saying do you know what is at stake right now sometimes they have family issues to resolve and they say you know what we'll resolve it later on we have to focus on the work of the kingdom this is the price that is paid on easy truly lies the head that wears the crown we live in a world today where people like to claim crowns the road that leads to the throne is the cross if you cannot pass through the cross there is no throne for you the olive that we anoint with the oil passes through the threshing floor the the, the grinding engine that squeezes it out we are here today not only to celebrate 50 years let's not allow the passage of time to distract us we are celebrating pastor uche a man who today has become a testament of continuity of resilience of loyalty he has become a model many people testified while um you know just giving their tributes a model an icon and the time that i've known you know just met him for a while but i've seen a very very sincere man a man who loves the lord truly a man who loves you truly now the bible says esteem them in love regard them from the depth of this contemplation do not feel guilty when you accord them honor ignorant people out there call on a human worship what is there about this man is it just because he's talking now I'm, I'm explaining to you a sermon is more than a lecture you are ministering life you are shaping the ideologies of people men of god are mind control systems they communicate ideas that shape society one wrong teaching can mislead a society and bring chaos and anarchy that will take the military to correct one correct communication can stand in partnership with government the powers that be to shape the mind of a society let me tell you this without missing words the role of spiritual leaders in nation building especially at a time like this cannot be overemphasized it is more than speaking 
words have always been the instruments that birth rebellion words have always been the instrument that shape the ideologies of people a civil society comes from people who think well those who think well come from superior ideas those ideas come from people who have paid the price to learn and model and communicate those ideas intelligently the foundation for any good society is not just god but those who have paid the price to learn the ways of God and then articulately communicate the keys that help people live right by thinking right. This your pastor has done. And I will repeat again, he deserves not only your applauds, he deserves your honor a thousand times. Therefore, let me request all of us to stand in concert and give this great man, this veteran of the gospel, Pastor Aigbe, a resounding round of applause. An applause that says thank you. An applause that says God bless you. An applause that says thank you for not giving up. An applause that says thank you for shelving your personal interest. Don't stop clapping. An applause that says thank you. Now I see. I see that while you were preaching, you were also bleeding. I see that while you were praying, you also had your issues. I see that while you had the opportunity to rest, you took that time to rest and invested it in my growth. Thank you. Hallelujah. Someday, we all will stand before the Lord. And many of you from this assembly and this church, who have been saved, blessed, changed through this man. You will stand at the other side of eternity. And when you look at this man, you will remember the message. You will remember where you sat. And you will say, thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you came. How shall they hear except they be a preacher? And how shall there be a preacher except he be sent? Let it be a culture. For some of you, this may be new. For some of you, this is a renewal of a habit of honor. The Bible says that them that rule well, them that lead well, them that labor in doctrine and in word, they are deserving of double honor. In five minutes, very quickly, let me challenge you on three ways the Bible recommends to show honor. Number one, prayer. The first way you show honor, please sit, please sit for a moment. Prayer. The first way you show honor is through prayer. If you can pray, then you show honor. Pray for us. Number two, very quickly. The second way is by supporting what that man represents. Your presence. Did you know, let me tell you this. Now, every, every session of your service inspired me, but I confess to you and forgive my bias, the most inspiring of all was when the men, my goodness, who saw that? When these men came and stood and held themselves together and said, we pledge to stand by you. It is greater than giving a car. It is greater than giving a house. The Bible says certain men came to David in the cave of Adullam and they came and pledged that they were going to stand by him until he became king. 
if you have a car it can spoil if you have a house it can fade away but if you have the gift of men men of honor who pledge their lives their integrity their credibility to stand by you that is a gift indeed i honor the men in this church for this this noble pledge and i pray for grace to live true to it in the name of jesus christ the bible says it is not good for man to be alone he's not just talking about a wife alone he's saying being alone in this kingdom is risky you will need the support you will need the synergy of strengths you will need ideas that when you are alone it is dangerous when you are alone serving God it is dangerous no wonder the Bible says that God himself gave Jesus as the only seed so that he will come and bring many sons into glory today he's not the only begotten he's the first of we the begotten are we together now you must pay the price to support your man of God let me tell you this I, I did observe that I respond to several text messages and at least 90 arguably 90 to 92 I would say percent of them are full of needs you know problems and all of that and some of them even harass me apostle you don't know who I am blah 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 God anointed you this is how you people are arrogant. I used to know you before now you are a proud person you know, and so on and so forth and this is the burden that we go through but then in the midst of all that you will see a very well-intentioned text apostle god bless you i hope you are resting i hope you are eating just to know that we're behind you praying for you i said now this is a text worth reading after a busy day after a lot of noise do you know how encouraging it is when a man of god knows that you are standing behind him you are praying for him and you are supporting him he can count on you pray for your pastor number two support him to support him means make the work easy if you are a worker in church be apt to your work give your best do all that you do let the man of god be focused on the ministry of prayer and the word and don't distract him into dealing with trivial matters there are trivial matters that can be so distracting trivial matters that maturity can solve trivial matters that forbearance can solve trivial matters that growth and listening to the word can solve the assignment of a man of god is to be committed to the ministry of the word and prayer primarily then number three the third and final way the bible encourages us to honor and esteem men of god is by giving to reward this sorry i i didn't state scriptures down but let me give one for this first corinthians chapter 9 and verse 11. we're about to pray first corinthians chapter 9 and verse 11. if we have sown unto you spiritual things is it a great deal if we shall reap from you carnal or material things carnal there does not mean sinful it means material things that means paul is saying if it is true that you consider that we have fed you if it's true that your life has been changed through the ministry if it is true that you have been lifted if it is true that you have been blessed if we have cried with you we have laughed with you is it is it an offense is it wicked if there is an expectation in our hearts that we reap from the material things it is not an offense at all to honor a man of god and there is no amount of giving and honor that can quantify the level and the extent of impact that your pastor has done and has brought to your life last scripture galatians 6 and verse 6 galatians 6 and verse 6 galatians 6 and verse 6 let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teach it in all good things please say after me all good things 
let him that is taught in the word that means you have a responsibility it's not just a favor it's a responsibility the same way men of God have a responsibility to be instant in season and out of season to ensure that under any and all conditions that they come with a fresh word to teach, to build, to mentor, to disciple, to raise, to help, to support, to rebuke, to correct in righteousness, to commend in righteousness. It says those who are taught also have a responsibility. The scripture is there to communicate in all good things and the Bible talks about giving it says according as you have proposed in your heart every man so let him give not grudgingly but cheerfully for God loves a cheerful giver pastor Aigbe and his wonderful wife they continue to be faithful servants of God in this assembly and today we have come to stand by him celebrating him for five decades of God's faithfulness but more than that celebrating him for stewardship celebrating him for faithfulness my encouragement and my responsibility to you and us all is that our gratitude and our honor is not complete until it is backed up with genuine giving and for many of us sacrifice for God so loved the world that he gave forget about who he gave his son is not the only one he has given he gave many other things he gave righteousness he gave us eternal life he gave us life everlasting he gave us the Holy Spirit there is no end to how far we can give many of us have rewarded people in our companies and our businesses We've given them cars, we've given them houses, just to let them know that we love them. But the man who prayed and advised for that company to start, many times we ignore them. Now I know that when it has to do with the subject of giving, sadly, there are different imbalances and there are, pass, there are, there are thoughts and different ways that people have approached it that may not be exactly scriptural. But can I tell you this? I would do you great injustice and it will be wickedness on my own part if I come to charge you this morning on this occasion and I fail to tell you you owe a responsibility to not only pray to not only stand by this man of God but to see to it that your seeds that he is blessed from your benevolence and you see there is a way I can give you this that you know is not a gift take this is not a gift is that a gift the attitude is what makes the gift valuable so so that you understand what i'm saying there is a way i can give you this and throw it no i come with my alabaster box with understanding the bible says the woman broke it the attitude was what made it valuable not just that it was a year's wages for some of you you may not have so much but garnish it make it heavy by adding honor to it add honor to your basket of fruits and it will no longer become a basket of fruit it will become a gift that is well garnished with honor you can buy him a car you can buy him houses without honor and it's truly not a gift but then you can bring whatever it is that you have with understanding and tell your pastor thank you let me encourage everyone as I wrap up if you can and you do have access to his number why not send him a text let him know what you have done in his life don't say many people have blessed me you are one of them that's not a wise way to show honor don't even do that to anybody at all it's not a wise way psychologically speaking you fail that test already you must give him a sense of exclusivity. Pastor, thank you. I've thought thoroughly on all that has happened in my life through your grace and your ministry. And I'm here saying thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your endurance. Thank you for your patience. That's honor. Pastor Igbe, thank you, sir. 
thank you for not failing God. Thank you for not failing Pastor Paul. Thank you for not failing House on the Rock, the refuge. Thank you for the silent prayers. Thank you for the tears. Thank you for the endurance. May I please request your dear wife to stand too. Because everything that happens, happens to you both. Thank you, ma. We may never know what you go through standing by this man. But we want to let you know that there are people who are sensitive enough to know that in the midst of the pain, whilst you sing, whilst you stand by him, whilst you endure, there are people who know that you have gone through so much, both of you, and that we continue to pray for you. We are not here to stand with you. We are here to fall together too. That's real grace. That's real endurance. That's real friendship. The friendship that stands alone is not true friendship. It is the one if we go down, we go down together. If we stand, we stand together. For as long as you are following Christ, I encourage everyone here, please, make sure you are a direct contributor to the life of these people. Do not bring news that disturbs their spirit. Do not bring news that frustrates their, their walk with God. Everything that can be a blessing to them is welcome in their life. And everything you know can be a source of pain. Ah, they said this, take it away. Bring prayers, bring blessings, bring words of advice. Are we together? Thank you for the honor of bringing this church to God's people. House on the Rock, the Refuge. One more time, let me request that we all stand and give this great man an applause of honor. The Lord bless you. The Lord increase you. In Jesus' name. House on the Rock, the Refuge. While you are standing, please put your hands Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaskade bashkana kata branda kate katos. Kate branda kata pakotos koto preke teke le kata. The phase of development. Lord.